All right, so day three, Saturday. So, <laughs> Chip and I are gonna go and do a talk on the main stage. We're gonna go and uh, have a chat and a talk about what we've been doing the last couple of years. Yep. And uh, hopefully a couple future. of people are in the talk about and the, the future. future. The future. And uh, hopefully there's a few people watching us. We're on time, we're doing good. We're just gonna head there now. Hello. So we are from, uh, this is not a toy store. Uh, we are based in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, we've been um, a company in Australia for two years now. Uh, Fletch and I met in uh, Singapore at Singapore ToyCon, um, and that was, what was that, 2017? Yeah, 2017. And ever since then, we've been having this dream to make toys together. So maybe yeah. do you want to talk, talk about that? Yeah, well, I'm going to just play something here now. This is uh, some soft vinyl that we are about to release. So it's just an introduction to our store and the soft vinyl project that we got it last year. In Melbourne, uh, when we first started out, was we did these custom toy shows. Do you want to talk about this? Yeah, so we met, I met Chipta in 2017 at STGCC, which is the Singapore um, toy event. And he actually moved down to Melbourne. And when he got to Melbourne, he's like, hey, coach, can you introduce me to all the toy artists? And I basically said, well, I don't know any because in Australia, none of the toy artists knew each other. And this is in 2017. So we had our first show and there was four people, four toy artists. And that was pretty much it. But we had a really good response. Um, and we just, we started building from there. We had, you know, four of us, basically, right? The first show was four people. The second show after that, because it was so popular, we had 12 artists. The third show had 24 artists. And then it just kept growing from there. The next show after that was 40. And then we pretty much stuck at 40 artists per show until we finally had to open our shop. And the story about opening our shop is quite interesting as well. Um, so this was the first show. So we had a pretty good response. And you have to understand, in Australia, the designer toy scene is nowhere near as big as this. You wouldn't have an event that's this big in Australia at the moment. Not so, yet. Yeah, not, not yet, not yet. But it was quite strange for us who were toy designers in Australia. We we were kind of cut off from one another. We just did not know anybody else that was toy designer. There wasn't any kind of community. There wasn't any kind of sense that like... In fact, it was almost like uh, our toy artists, uh, when I first got to Australia, it was like 2018. It kind of felt like they were all like, oh, you know, I make toys, but uh, I'm the only one. Or, or, or I don't know who that is, so I don't associate myself with them. Uh, the only way to bring them together was to create these group shows. And creating group shows meant that automatically they were talking to each other. And it was a really friendly kind of vibe. Though it, there were very few people who kind of didn't want to continue being part of that community. So I mean, don't get us wrong, there are a lot of toy designers in Australia. Um, so there's some very popular soft vinyl producers over the years. But it was all, everybody was on their own, like everybody was just kind of doing their own thing. Nobody was getting together and actually like working together or anything like this. So this was the second show that we did. And I think the second show we had maybe 18, 20? The second show was 12 artists. The second show was 12. We still had 12. Oh, this is the third show. The third show, yeah. Right. The third show is where we got 24 artists. And that was like an eye opener because yeah, suddenly that we had it. Yeah, 24 artists in this space, and so many people were became aware that there was actually a growing scene in Australia, and this just meant that more people found out about us because through social media and through other uh, avenues, just word of mouth, people started to realize like, oh, there's something happening, and we got to be at the center of it, which is great. But the problem was, 2020 was when COVID hit. And when COVID hit, it changed a lot of our lives as toy makers. But one good thing did come of it. Uh, we basically sat in our studios making toys for like a year. And as you might or might not know, Melbourne had the worst lockdown in the entire world. 
we were in lockdown for, it was like probably a total of about 180 days. We weren't allowed to go more than five kilometers from our house. We were only allowed outside for one hour. And so what we did is we just basically sat there on video chat with each other in our studios making toys. And we made so many toys. Like, I, I, there's one thing I miss about COVID and that is having the time in the studio to actually make the toys. So uh, I guess the thing was about coming out of COVID. I mean, I'm, this is still talking about the shows. Like, you know, there's still stuff happening with the shows. But one, one thing I just wanted to add was that uh, when we finally did come out, this was the first show that we did when we came out of COVID. Oh, this is the one. This, I said. Yeah. this was the first show that happened when we came out of COVID, and it still had such a strong impact, and it really felt some, like something positive. We had more artists in this show than we had in any show previous. And that was when all the government grants started coming up. And the government was like, hey. Yeah, they were like, well, you guys are doing something weird and cool and art. Makes us look good. <laughs> so what happened is, that, do you want to talk about a bit about, you, you kind of made this happen at the start of the shop front activation. All the shops in the city in the Melbourne CBD were, they were all empty. It was dead. Basically, there was nothing happening in the, in mid Melbourne, in the city, there were, it was like every other shop was closed and everything else was like Starbucks or like perfume, clothing. There was nothing interesting happening. There were no more of those cool record shops. Most of the comic shops had closed down except for like the big two. There was nothing really happening. And then we got the opportunity to open our first shop. And that was yeah. this one. They gave, us, they gave us three months of rent free kind of a shop for three months. We are like, well, we just finished a, so a show. So we'll just bring everything from the show into the shop. And we ended up ending up being there for a whole year. What was supposed to be three months ended up being three years. And these are all the shows that we did in the first year. And then we had no room. So we found this old this place warehouse. Crack den. Crack den. Yeah. It was basically a dilapidated warehouse. And we built our new store. So by this stage, we're, we're coming up to maybe about 50, 50 artists or so, 50 or 60 artists that have been working with us and doing stuff. And the store let us do so many things. We have a gallery upstairs, we have the toy store downstairs, and out the back we have a workshop, workshop. space. Workshops, workshops and studios, and uh, that we can even stay there when we need to. And it just ended up just being like one-tenth the rent of what we were paying in the city, and 10 times the size. So if you can imagine, with 60 artists, like we were able to really focus on the gallery space. We were able to have shows every other week. Every two weeks we were having shows featuring an artist or featuring something that was happening. That was and the brand who gave us money. And they said, hey, this is really great. We're gonna give you some money. $10,000. So we used that to basically go, to, the I furniture. go to Ikea. <laughs> and basically just buy a whole bunch of stuff from Ikea and fit out the whole shop and just paint it up. Like yeah. we're, we're, very, we're very retro kind of punk rock style, like yeah. just DIY style down in Australia. You know? it, definitely, it definitely made an impact because we got voted two times the, one of the most interesting places to visit in Melbourne, especially when we were in the city where we are in the, like the center of everything that was happening. We got a timeout and what's on Melbourne to, to give us shout outs uh, we even had the, uh, what was it, uh, Sally who? Sally... Uh, we had the Lord Mayor. The Mayor. Actually come down to our shop. The Lord Mayor of Lord Melbourne. Mayor. Um, and that was really cool. So this is our gallery space that we had upstairs from the shop, uh, the store. So it's a really nice space. It's still really quite a little retro and all that. But we just, we put a lot of work into doing this. It was not like this. It was. A uh, dingy, terrible space. It was gorgeous now. Oh, yeah. Like, there was, there was so, there was some weird things in the space. So we made it really nice. We have a lot of shows. So I think even last year we did probably about twenty shows, and a lot of those are custom shows where we will produce a piece of resin um, and then give it out to maybe forty or fifty artists, and the artists will go to customize all of those pieces and then put it back into the show. So um, yeah. It's been, a, having the store has been a really, really interesting experience. We've never done retail before, we're toy artists. Um, it's been a really great learning experience, but it's been a great place for the community to gather as well. It's really interesting having like a whole bunch of artists suddenly have to become business people, because we're so bad at it. 
We just paid our taxes. That only took us a year. We were about a year too late. But we finally got it done. We're so, artists. We don't, we don't yeah. like taxes. Taxes? You know, taxes and joys. Like, who, who does that? We just want to make joys. So there's a song of the custom shows. So this was a My Little Pony custom show. Um, we workshops. Do, we do, yeah, we, workshops. So this is our, our back workshop space. So one of our big things is doing workshops, community workshops. And artists will come through here and do a workshop. And I say from every one that we do, we get a new toy artist that Absolutely. continues on. So we're building, building this community like bit by bit and trying to get as many toy artists in Australia to actually come and say, hey, you can actually do this and you can do it in Australia now. We definitely have uh, about a dozen of our artists have come out of those workshops. Just being able to teach people how to make toys, it's satisfying, but for them it's like, the world because it might be something they've always wanted to do. Uh, I learned a lot when I first started making toys from Fletch uh, because he's, Same. yeah, you know, it just it just you work off each other. You have you have particular skills, you have particular techniques and tricks that you just feed off each other. You learn how to do things the way somebody else does it, and then you find your own way. So in the process of this, as you just saw, we also did a bunch of scenes and stuff. Um, <laughs> this was our first, uh, you know, the prototypes for our upcoming soft final, which will be the first one that the company is doing. We have a couple more in the wings. Um, and then, we're, this, these will probably be released, I would say May, May yeah. or June. Um, depending on if we go to Dale or if we go to Philippines That's or true. TTF, uh, these will be available. So, and the, they look amazing. These are our 3D prototypes. The Regenerates! Um, so yeah, these we're gonna after this we're gonna show you a bit of a documentary on how these are made. But this is our thing here at uh, in Thailand. Um, these are 100% recycled milk bottle toys. They are the OG of the toy world. Before soft vinyl, a lot of toys were made with foam. Um, and Chipper kind of spearheaded this effort of. I'm, I'm not gonna talk too much about this. It's a great documentary, but he kind of spearheaded the effort to get this equipment actually made specifically for us so that the guys in Indonesia could actually make the home model toys for us. They're very, very different to anything else. And yeah, look, this is just some of the artists and stuff in the community that we have. Uh, we have a lot of great get-togethers. Yeah. There's a lot of artists in that photo. This is the three of us in front of our shop. This is kind of like our little like uh, profile pic of who AJ's we are. AJ's here. AJ's here with us. In spirit. spirit. So um, I guess before we show the documentary about the regenerates, uh, I'll just talk a little bit about it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, have a chat and then we'll show the, the next video. Awesome. I guess the only part I really want to talk about before we show the documentary was the struggle that it took to get to making recycled plastic toys. You have no idea how difficult it is when you're going uphill and against the grain in the way of toy making because everybody's making this stuff now. Is this it? Yeah. Started? Yeah. That's All right. it. We'll come back and we'll talk more about this after we... So that's where we're at. Uh, bringing recycled plastic toys to the world. That's our whole thing. We just want to recycle. I mean, we're moving that direction. And like we said earlier, it hasn't been easy doing this in Melbourne. Uh, so we were kind of forced to do it overseas. And then we're going to bring this idea back to Australia when things start picking up. I mean, the whole thing is we've got to get people's attention. That's why we're here. That's why we're showing our toys here. It's very different to what, uh, what you know, everything else that you see around us. Please do come visit our booth. We're at, uh, where are we? FT10? Yeah, FT10. In the tent? BNC. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. We want to build a community in Australia for designer toys. Um, it hasn't existed. We've spent years now trying to build it up to a point where people, there, there are artists that have a community that they can talk to, they can go to, they can have exhibitions. Um, the community part of it is very, very important to us to try to get up and running. Once again, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, sounds good. I think that's our time. I think that's We've got the music playing. That usually means you've got to get off the stage, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for having us. Buy Recycle Toy Expo 2024! Buy Recycle Toy.
Yeah, so just finished our talk. I think it went pretty well. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for videoing that for us, Bill. Yes, you're fine. Bill no was problem. On the, Bill was on the video for it. So um, yeah, I think uh, now we're going to go and eat some food and then go back and try to sell more toys. Sell toys. Sell toys. Sell toys. Sell toys. That's just the motto.